Hallelujah. Are you ready for what you will learn today? Yes. I want you to go to Mark chapter 25. No, Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. Uh, verse 25 to 30, yeah. Sorry, sometimes things move for me, but Mark 5, 25 to 30. Amen. Uh -huh. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, mm -hmm. and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse. Mm -hmm. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, mm -hmm. and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. Mm -hmm. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, mm -hmm. turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? Amen. Amen. Can we all read it together? Because there's a powerful lesson in here. One, two, three. And a certain... Eh? From 25? Well, yes. Amen. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> and a certain woman, which had an issue of blood 12 years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be made. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? Amen. Amen. Now, whenever people read this particular story, um, they miss the most important part because everybody speaks about the suffering of the woman with the issue of blood. And it's justly so because she suffered for so many years and she went to every physician. She went to every physician, spent all manner of money to get a solution, but she could not. So hearing about the King of Kings, can we turn off the air, please? You're welcome. I'm like, these people are tempting me. I wanted to remove my hoodie, but I'm like, eh, eh. <laughs> so... Hearing about the king of glory, she said, maybe this is the guy that is going to help me. So she crawls like a commando, goes to where Jesus is, and finds a way to touch the Lord Jesus. Come, come, come sit here. Come, come sit here. He goes and, and, and touches the Lord Jesus. And the moment he puts his hands on the Lord Jesus, the garment of the Lord Jesus, she immediately gets healed, but Jesus gets affected. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, you didn't hear what I'm saying. She got healed, but Jesus got affected. Because the Lord Jesus noticed something happened to him. He realized that the, the reservoir of power within him had declined because power had left him. Many of you are dry right now because you were in relationship and friendships with people that took power from you. I, I'm done. That's good. <laughs> now you're not hearing what I'm saying. The power to contend against demons does not leave you. 
it is the measure and the height of your own spirit when your spirit has been cultivated matured by the hands of the living god when you have been fed in the presence of god you don't lose weight in the spirit that is why the gifts of god are without repentance because for you to acquire a gift from the spirit of god you have been expanded to a certain capacity now the capacity of an individual does not shrink spiritually that is why somebody who served the devil for a long time like Balaam the Lord could shift him and Balaam can be a prophet immediately hearing the voice of God because the potential and the expansion of his spirit does not change I'm trying to teach you some deep spiritual stuff but I don't know if you can hear me The spiritual capacity did not change. While you are filled with the Holy Spirit and you are still trying to figure out how does God talk? How does the Holy Spirit speak? I want to see angels. I, want, I, I just need to hear something small. A wizard who was deep in witchcraft can find salvation and will skip all the classes you went through because spirituality is just spirituality. That's good. Because if God is spirit and devils are spirits, the means to hear them is the same. Even though the language may differ, the capacity to perceive remains the same. Do you realize wizards and witches have more discernment than the church? Because discernment is not a Christian thing. And now you didn't hear what I said. Christian, listen, discernment is not a Christian thing. It is not exclusive to Christians. How then did the, now, now think about this. How then did the wizards in the time of Moses know that a deliverer had been born? They knew it in detail. They knew there is a deliverer that is born. He's going to be under the age of two. We know he is this old. He's born within this month. But in order to be safe, we have to kill everybody under two years old. And they went specifically to the house of the Hebrews and killed every child. Moses was snuck into the palace because they were not looking for the person in the palace. Notice, they could pick up somebody was born, but Jesus grew around the magicians and they could not detect him. I want to stop preaching because you're not. Maybe this is too much. That's good. He grew up among the magicians. He grew up among them. Nobody looked at him and said, mm, "This is the one. This is the." One. Nobody picked it up. Nobody knew it. But they still could know the details of his mission. The Lord Jesus is coming into the world. The Lord Jesus is coming into the world. Same exact thing happens. Magicians are speaking to Pharaoh. They're saying, Yo, there's another king coming. This guy's going to be the greatest king and he's going to replace you. Him being king, knowing that he will die and the legacy will have to continue, he didn't want to be replaced. Notice evil people have the ability to discern. What many of you don't know is that in the spirit there are no secrets. Wow. Secrets are for those who are in the flesh because you can hide. In the spirit nobody hides. In the spirit what keeps what you are doing private is the dimension you are in. The other enemy is not. So what you are doing is above them, beyond their capacity to perceive. Amen. But if it is going to come to the world, it will go through all their dimensions so other people will see it too. Amen. That's so good. Now, notice the magicians knew that this man will be king, he will be powerful. This man will be a deliverer, will be powerful. They got a glimpse of God's mind, but they did not get the fullness of God's mind. That's what makes us different. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 
is that the Holy Spirit is able to tell us his intentions and what he's going to do. He lays out for us for us to specifically know what is actually going to do. So we can pick up something by our spirit and we can inquire of the Lord and the Lord will tell us. So you need to understand that while other people, while the shepherds were asleep, the wizard saw the star. Shepherds represent pastors, by the way. Amen. 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 Uh, you see, you, <laughs> they were asleep with their flock, watching over their flock. That angels had to wake them up and say, don't you know who has been born? This is why the church fights each other because most of your men of God discover people on YouTube and on Facebook. They have no capacity to be in prayer to discern that there is somebody else coming and that they need to prepare for the one that will come to help the work of God go even farther. So we are busy focused on self because we are selfish. We don't prepare the next generation because it's about us. I will tell you this. The reason why I'm so interested in raising people, cultivating people, I have no uh, desire to be the only prophet for what? Do you think, listen, I love serving God with everything that is in me. Last night I baptized 220 people. Amen. Okay? Amen. About 220 people. Yeah, amen. Don't you think it would be easier if there was another one like me or better than me I won't have to spend three hours baptizing people. Look how late I came for prayer because I was still like, hey, I'm exhausted. Are you understanding what I'm saying? No, this is in the kingdom of God is called a kingdom for a reason. The only one who is the center of every show is King Jesus. Amen. Amen. We are all servants. The point is you got a part to play in his presence. So Jesus felt energy. Yes. And what is energy? Energy is simply the ability to move things. So you have what is called potential energy. And you have kinetic energy. I hear my physicists in here. Some people went to school, so it's good. Amen. So energy is divided into two main parts if I should say there's more it can be more intricate but this is all that it is there is potential energy meaning the storage of energy what is potential it is a gauge of how much you could do not what you will do but you could do thank you mama Rene it's all possibility just because something is a possibility doesn't mean you will do it Don't be with somebody based on possibilities Amen. or potential. Amen. No, can they cover me? Can they pray for me? Can they be? Yes. Yes. Jesus. Yes. Don't go into business with potentials. Maybe he could know. Christians learn to do contracts. Yes. Amen. 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 And my advice to you, don't do business with Christians. No. I'm just being real. The more the tongues, the farther you should be. Because they will be energized and then tomorrow they will say, the Holy Spirit told me not to. Is I'm, I know I'm keeping... Am I being honest? It's true. They can, they can grieve you to the point you like, you're like, what kind of kingdom is this? Because many of us don't understand duty. Not all of us, many of us. Many don't understand duty. Many don't. Many of us don't. We do things on the surface. We touch things on the surface. That's been the main function of how we do things. We have to be committed people that if we say we're going to do something, we go through with it and we what? And we do it. But if we don't go through with things, 
we make the king of glory look bad it's jesus that we are shaming it's jesus that we are shaming so potential energy is the amount of power you have gathered for the exploit that is to come kinetic energy is the, how much you have released to change a situation the bible says unto him who is able to do all things according to the power that worketh within power is not the holy spirit there is a difference between power and the holy spirit the holy spirit gives you power but the holy spirit is not power yet at the same time the holy spirit is powerful because power is just power the bible says all authority and power comes from god the witch you're seeing doing juju that power came from god because power is just power or let me talk to some religious people who have no ability to know spiritual things you many of you think you're fighting against powers of darkness the bible says that figuratively in many places but if the bible is telling you all authority and power it did not say good power because power is neither good nor bad authority is neither good or bad authority is just authority that is why the bible says honor everybody in authority why because it came from god it's god that put them in those places is is this adding up is this making sense so now I, I want you to gather this within you power is just power and there is no such thing as illegally acquiring power the bible never said that people make up stuff to justify why the evil one has power no angels have potential energy and kinetic energy too if you read psalms 103 you notice david praying and saying praise the lord all ye his angels that excel in strength meaning their strength is added upon it is increased the angels that have limitation in certain things is because their potential energy is not qualified to move a certain thing that is why the angels who come to give you messages from god and the angels that fight for you are different amen amen I, i'm you're teaching good. i i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it you're teaching good i pray that you're opening your ears to hear this There is no such thing as evil way to acquire power. Why? Because power was already given to man from the beginning. Genesis 1.26 Let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have what? Dominion. Do you know what dominion is? Unquestionable power. Unquestionable power over every creature that lives within the globe this is the reason for the devil to do something he needs a human and for god to do something also he needs a human now what makes god different is that god can make himself a human mm. amen so the things that he can do he cannot be limited waiting for a human hey come on and because he has saved humans humans have become part of his body so jesus can project his kinetic energy even through a believer who was born yesterday to do such a mighty work amen and tomorrow they'll try to do it again they cannot because they did not have potential energy the holy spirit just chose to use them come on yes the teacher 
I'm praying that your eyes are opening to see this. <laughs> so, so God can just use you. That's why I always say, don't be used by God. Walk by walk with God. Because the Bible says the earth and all that are in it belong to God. So God can do anything with any human being. It doesn't mean that he has chosen them. That's good. If there was a prophet where Balaam was, God would have never used him. God wouldn't have used him. Why? But because among them, there was no one that was awake. God had to turn their enemy <laughs> into somebody that can minister to them. Major wizard and sorcerer. You know they call me one minute I'm a sorcerer, one minute I'm a wizard. Please make up your mind. It's because they don't know spiritual things. They don't know what a wizard is. They don't know what a sorcerer is. They don't know what a warlock is. Everything is just bunched up. They even call you devil. It's like, which one is it? If you didn't know, the devil is powerless. So if you call me a devil, it means to you the devil is powerful. No, you didn't hear what I just told you. If you call me the devil, it means you, the devil, is the climax of power. And the crazy thing, some, most of these foolish people that talk about me, they have blocked me on all their social medias. Listen, I'm not afraid of anyone. Physically, I will smash you. Spiritually, I will also smash you. Let's go. So I'm not worried about anyone. But when you know that what you're doing is wicked, you block somebody not to see you. Why? Hide it. Not to beat you, smash. Not a fight. No, this is true. I'm just being honest with you. You know, many don't understand the dimensions in God. They think that you, they don't understand that some of us are just, God has changed our heart not to act out of anger. If Elisha could kill boys, these were children. You think God really, you have to understand the vision of God. Let me give you the mind of God for a second. Amen. No, am I saying I'm trying to kill anyone? I know I will never do that for what? Yes. But understand this. Understand this by the Spirit of God. Understand this. He left the 99 sheep for one. He left. He didn't keep them safe. He left them for one. Meaning there are some amongst us are not the same value with the 99. They are actually more than 99. So the shepherd would rather have that one and abandon the 99. Because that one can win thousands upon thousands upon thousands. Then keeping the 99 that cannot produce anything. He left them. He didn't say he left them in a pen. He didn't say he left them in a say. He left to live is to live. That's so good. Because God looks at potential energy. Yeah. Who is of more value? Uh -huh. in, in God's benevolence and in God's love, we are all the same. But at the same time not. Because he said, I love this one more than this one. Yeah. And the ones he loves always have the ability to do more for him. Yeah. Because remember, love is a verb. It is not emotional. So if God decides, I am going to use Benz. Amen. I love Benz. is because he has also seen Benz as the capacity to yes. make him yes. or to please him. Tell me one person that God loved that he didn't use. Or let me rephrase that properly. Tell me somebody that God loved and didn't use mightily. Doesn't exist. If he loves you, 
he is walking with you and he will do wonders through you why because god is always measuring one thing potential energy Amen. that is what the bible says he who forgives much who is forgiven much loves much why because when you mess up and you see the goodness of god yes. your capacity is actually increased because Amen. you are more surrendered than somebody who thinks Hallelujah. they can justify themselves before god yes. yeah. I don't know if somebody is ca capturing this. Amen. Paul is taking a man, handing him over to the devil for the destruction of his soul, for uh, the destruction of his body, but salvation of his soul. The Christianity you people have is for children. It's not the real thing. You have been taught, oh, God doesn't kill Christians. Who told you that? God wiped out his own people, delivering them from Egypt. Yeah. They messed up. He destroyed them over 40 years. Some Moses parted the ground and took them. You are saying God does. God doesn't kill you in the sense of taking you to hell. Yeah. Because if he saves you, he saves you. Yeah. Man. He may take your life because you are an interruption to what he's doing. But he will preserve you. Do you know how many people I know that everybody thinks that, oh, they died too early. No, God saved them. Because if he left them, he was going to lose them. Wow. So he rather shortened their life. Amen. But for them to enter heaven. What does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? So God is valuing your soul more than the car, than the house, than the pleasure. So God will remove you quickly. Yeah. To save you. Amen. This is why you notice good people seem to live a very short life. But bad people live so long. You're like, why? Because they are being given time. I'm talking to wrong people. Some of you, your brothers, your sister, your uncle may have slept. And you're like, oh, gone too soon. No. Saved. Amen. Amen. At the precise moment, because if God left them, they were going to go the wrong way. Amen. This is the truth. Yes. Yes. I know this of my, some of my family members. I know this. I 100% know this. God is not your uncle. Don't think you have figured him out. Amen. Uh, touch your neighbor say god is not your uncle god is not your uncle i i can hear you say god is not your uncle god is not your uncle i can hear you you can say it louder and better god is not your uncle god is not your uncle god is not your uncle not at all his ways are completely not our ways amen yeah. that's true so you are thinking god will do uh, god would never do that ah okay I have seen him and even me, I know to tread carefully because God can just switch up. His ways are not our ways. No one has figured out God. That is why everyone says, Father, show me your ways. Because his ways have been not from the foundations of earth, but ever, it, 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 eternal, everlasting. It's been that way before beginnings began for he has been and he doesn't change because he's set in his ways people in time change he doesn't you didn't hear what i told you people in time change because time makes all things change it is inevitable but those who exist out outside of time and there's only one who does god himself he can't be changed. You can't say tomorrow he will change. He does everything based on his decision. Ah, where was I? God is able to do all things according to the power that is within you. Amen. There are so many people that come to me and say, Prophet, I used to hear God. And now I, I pray and I try, but I can't hear God at all. I, I don't know what I did. God is not talking to me. I don't know where I go. 
if you used to hear him you had potential energy but you got carried away with people and it diminished come on the reason why i don't like people who talk too much they have a tendency to take power from you the more you are anointed the farther you are from people that is why i don't hang out with people because you will deplete me when i am supposed to be healing people you see energy makes things to come alive When everybody calls you when they are in trouble, is because in the spirit they have sensed they can draw life from you. Yes. My God. So every time you are playing counselor, you are diminishing the ability to go through tomorrow. Jesus. Uh, let me let me let me stop. When we say a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian, it's because of one thing. Your reservoir gets diminished. And there is a system and a protocol that you need to follow. To be in the presence of God or else you'll be diminished. When I began my journey in ministering for the Lord. Who was here from the house? Who was here from the house other than than Delhi? Okay. Uh, mm, Madam Rice, were you really there? Wow, yeah. (laughs) No, I'm joking. (laughs) Ah, let me, who Madam Rice was definitely there. That's for sure. Uh, who else? Lee and a few. Where is uh, I'm looking. Lee was there, and who else? I'm looking for somebody else. Prophet Ron. Huh? Ah, Big Ron would. Yeah, Big Ron as well. Um, that's my big brother. He's been with me forever. Amen. Uh, the the only uh, um the only as guardian to be saved. <laughs> He looks like Thor's uncle. <laughs> Prophet Ron is a good man. He's been around me for a long time and we've known each other for years. Actually, before Andrew was born, you know that, Ron? Yeah, I, he knew me before I was a father. Yes, Prophet Ron has known me for that long. Prophet Ron took me to the first Muay Thai gym I'd ever been to. No, it's true. He's the one who started. Ron, ah. This house has, has Peters that have come down. Amen. This man has trained some of the greatest fighters in the world. No, Amen. I'm serious. Amen. Been in some of the greatest corners. Him himself, you see him like that. He's, he can kick so high, it's incredible. <laughs> it's like, Ron, how are you doing that? Look at, look at you. You see him like that. Try to jump. Even I don't even need to lift a finger. <laughs> ah, Prophet Ron will take you out. True prophets are actually warriors. They are not complainers. When you see these children online complaining about this one, gossiping about this one, they have no prophetic because we are so burdened with the work of God, we have no time to talk about people. Amen. If you have time for YouTube, you have no time for prayer. If you have time to edit clips, you have no time for prayer. You know, I always say Jesus never said, called people dead, but he said sleep. It's a prophetic term, meaning they can be reawakened. Because what is asleep can be woken up. But what is dead, it is done. So when you are walking in the spirit, even your language matters. Somebody cut a video or false prophet Lovi said Jesus never said somebody is dead. Then he said, then he read Jesus told his disciples, uh, uh, what is his name? Lazarus is asleep. Then he said plainly, he is dead so that they understand. So you see he's false. He said Jesus never said he was dead. No, Jesus said the word dead so that they can understand. But you look when you're just busy looking for something, you're demon possessed. That's signs of demons, I'm telling you. I went to Africa. (laughs) You are demon possessed. So you don't even have potential energy. You have no energy at all. Because if you are going to fight, let's assume 
I was truly a spiritualist. Let me give them a new word. A spiritualist. <laughs> Let's assume that. Do you think you can take me down with YouTube? Do you really think you can stop spirituality with YouTube? No, no what they are trying to do is to win people to themselves. Yes. It is not really about me. It's about I want to be him. Yes. That's good. Why don't I have people following me? My influence, yet two people are watching you. It is really not about the person. It's about what they wish their potential was. How do you fight spirituality with carnality? I exposed. No. Jesus said, cast out devils. That's right. That's right. If you're not dealing with this spiritually, you're wasting time. Is somebody hearing me? So understand this by the Spirit of God. Let me get back on track because I have 18 minutes or less. Potential energy and kinetic energy. When you're storing energy, that's why it says those who remain, those who remain in the presence of God shall renew their strength. The word renew there means restoration. He didn't say they will receive new strength. He said they shall renew, meaning they will start it over shall renew their strength what does it say they shall run and not what faint because they are charged up and they will mount up as eagles but if you are always talking with people hanging out with people spending time with people what happens is naturally because energy will go where something is not in motion to make it move. But there are people who are black holes. Yes, yes, yes. That's the truth. Energy vampires. Yes. At least a leech can get satisfied. Vortexes cannot be filled. They can't. You see, people usually think about the spirit of lust to mean sexual, to mean uh, uh, all these other things, but lust is much more profound than that. Mm -hmm. The essence of lust, or what makes lust lust, if you understand cognitively how to think, if you know how to use your mind, you understand that the problem with lust is not desire. It is not its intensity because the intensity can be positive or negative. That is why the Bible says the spirit lusts after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit. Notice, in this context, according to the spirit, it is positive. But according to the flesh, it is negative. But it's the same word. Come on. So lust, the problem with lust is it can never be satisfied. Love wants to satisfy another. Lust is, uh, love is always seeking to satisfy another. But lust seeks to satisfy itself. And the problem is because it is lust, it is never fulfilled. Love can give satisfaction, lust can never. That is why somebody wants to get high today. Tomorrow they will want to be even higher. The next week they will try even harder drugs. Why? Because it keeps on wanting more, even to the point of destruction. Love preserves. Amen. Love preserves. It doesn't destroy. When you are in a marriage, 
having intense desire for your partner is a good thing. It's not a negative thing. Unless it turns into lust where it is about you being satisfied and the person you're with not being satisfied. That's a problem. It is no longer love. It is lust. Is this making sense? Yes. It becomes a problem. So now when you understand energy, you start comprehending who should I give my strength to and whom I should not. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes. You start to understand who should I give my strength to and who should I not? Who should I argue with and who should I not? Should I respond to a comment or should I not? Should I want to prove myself right or should I not? Because every time you being in the hands of God, everything you do exerts energy. This is even physically. But spiritual energy is so important because if you are dry, you become vulnerable to the devil himself. You become vulnerable to the devil yourself. So Jesus, the son of the living God, has not given the approval for power to leave him, but somebody touched him, took power. How much more for you? Amen. Amen. I, I feel like I'm teaching the wrong people. Are you, are you sure you can hear me? Yes. yes. There are people you can hang out with and you live and you feel like you are so tired. Yet you are just sitting, maybe watching Netflix, maybe you are just, you know, hanging out, nothing happened, or nothing was going on, you didn't go on errands. You are simply chill mode. And all of a sudden, you are so exhausted. Mentally, you can't even think anymore. You just feel like a, a sloth, like a, everything you do. <laughs> Motion is taken from you because you are dealing with a vortex. You are dealing with a black hole that cannot be filled. That's it. There is no prayer to bind these people. There is only one strategy. Stay away from these people. I'm going to say it one more time. Help us, help us. There is no bind them. God keep them away from me. No. You have to have the wisdom and the understanding not to give your strength. That's good. That's good. Jesus goes to who I call. I have a powerful message called the 13th Apostle. Amen. He goes to him and says, follow me. The man said, I need to go and bury my father. He said, let the dead bury the dead. What was he saying? The people you are with will take your energy from you. Let them deal with each other. Don't go there. Yeah. Notice Jesus could not save him. He had to decide not to go to the dead. Uh -huh. If you are around people who are not doing things, who are not actively going after God's desire for their life, they will suck the energy out of you that will give you the power to go after what God has for you. Amen. This is why when God isolates you, it is actually an advantage to you. Yes. I see some men of God, some men of God, Richard, oh man of God, these people don't want me to do this. They don't want me to be among them. They don't want me. They, they. It's always the desire to be accepted, to be accepted. They don't understand their superpower is that they didn't accept you. That is actually where your strength is. Uh, I, I am, you know, other people, uh, they, they just hang out and me, I just sit here, nobody wants to. It is an advantage. 
God is giving you time to accumulate potential energy. Amen. What releases energy is now vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Why? Because energy must be directed. Energy must be concentrated. And energy must be consecrated. It must point to one place and one place only with all the focus you can have. Sunlight is very powerful. But it is only it only becomes a weapon when you can concentrate it. When we were children, we played with what is called a magnifying glass. When you focused the sun, the 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 the, the sun rays to one little point, it burnt through paper and caused a fire. But when the sun is just hitting you, you can't burn. You may get a sunburn, but if they concentrate that light on you, you will die. You will get more than four degree burn. You It will really destroy you. So when your power is not managed well, you will think you are not powerful. I'm trying to tell <laughs> you. You think you're not powerful. You say, oh, Father, I need more power. I need more anointing. I need this. I need that. God is saying, uh, your problem is you have never concentrated power. Power hasn't been focused. And power hasn't been concentrated yeah. and consecrated. Yeah. So it becomes problems. It creates what? Problems. It puts you in a bad place. Gossip draws power to your enemies when you engage in gossip you're stripping yourself of power that's good amen this is why vacation recharges you because it's just you with the beach you and 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 a coconut somewhere sitting sipping not seeing anybody seeing people you don't know no one is coming to disturb you no phone nobody is taking anything from you many of you are guarding your pockets but you're not guarding your spirit so many have taken what is in your spirit that's what why what is in your pocket is small yes. that's so good <laughs> for as much as people like think i like being around people having it actually it's not like that it's actually completely on the other side if i am not with the immediate family i am with family <laughs> Either the boys, my sons, my little brother, my little sisters, my wife, things like that. But even them, Benny is here, she's a witness. You say, I'll be with them, and all of a sudden I've disappeared. Where are you? No, I'm just in the studio. What are you doing? No, I'm just sitting here. It's my nature. That is why I always say, if I find somebody that gives me rest, it means a lot to me. I'll call Charles Jackson. Say, Charles, get on the UFC, let's pray. What it's doing is not only calming my spirit, he does not pull from me. 
he has become like a battery for me that when i am with him or playing with him it gives me the ability to charge up because no one is taking from me when i'll call my son michael i'll be like get on mortal combat right now okay let's go it is an opportunity to charge up because what they are doing is they are giving me uh, uh what is it called not just company they are giving me comfort and they are putting me in a place of restoration and this i'm talking about people that are not flesh and bone but we are bound by the spirit sometimes i just call my little brother chas and tell him come and be at the house we may not even sit and talk we'll be passing he's on the other wing of the house i'm on the other side and I said, Charles, where are you? No, I'm here, Pops. Oh, all right, cool, cool, cool. That's it. Him being around would just give me a certain... You see, Paul had that with who? Titus. Jesus had that with John. Don't be giving out, and, and Moses had Joshua. Elijah had Elisha. Don't be giving out this best friend card like, like a membership to a club. Amen everyone oh that's my good friend you know <laughs> everyone everyone no you can have good people around you but you need to know um is it taking from me or is it adding on me it is human nature to want to be needed it is human nature to desire to be needed and remember, to self-isolate is the plan of the devil. To be separated for God, it is God's mind. So there are people who separate themselves, but they are not separated. Every genuine prophet I know, they don't talk too much. They may be vocal when they are with you, but other than that, they are silent people. Because it takes stillness to hear God. So if you are always talking, you're not hearing. You're not listening. A calm and mixed spirit is of great value. Listen to what the Bible says. Great value to God. Great value. So anyone who puts a sense of chaos within your spirit is devaluing your worth before God. Let me talk to Auntie Benz. Auntie Benz, my great, please. I'm breaking my neck trying to find you. What's your problem? This is a serious thing. The reason why, remember, God does not answer you according to your prayer. He's able to do th all things according to the power that resides in you. People think, oh, I prayed for 10 hours, so God is going to do it. No. Do you know why God chose Moses? <laughs> Moses had power within him, so God could do what he wanted with Moses. That's good. There were people who knew God in Egypt before Moses even knew who God was. They were praying, how long, oh God, full of grace and mercy, God of our fathers, how long God is not doing anything with them? God is waiting for Moses to leave the palace. Because he had the potential. He had the capacity that God could fill and can use. What have you inside of you? The Bible speaks about a devil, and the Lord Jesus is the one who speaks about this. He says, when a spirit is cast out, it, it goes into dry places, seeking what is called rest. And when the spirit finds no rest, what does it do?
He says, I will go back to the house that I came from. I will go back to the house that I came from. And when he goes back to that house, the Bible says, he finds that house clean. Hear me and hear me well. He finds that house what? Clean. He brought seven more spirits who more wicked than itself. But they found the house clean. And they caused the condition of that man to be worse than before. Meaning a clean house doesn't keep demons out. You didn't hear what I'm telling you. Oh, don't do this, don't do that, don't steal, don't kill. It is good. But that is not what keeps demons out. Oh, you open the door to the devil. No. Oh, because you did this, you open the door to the devil. No, the problem is you avoid. You have no energy within you. You have nothing filling you. Because God made the house clean. The man didn't make the house clean. God made the house clean, meaning the person changed his character, changed his ways. But there was nothing inhabiting inside. So when the enemy, when he comes to you, what makes him possess you? What, does, what makes an enemy possess you? What makes demon possess people? It's not sin. Cain sinned and he had no demon. He killed somebody. There was no demon inside of him. <laughs> I know your religious leaders wouldn't like this. I'm just telling you the truth. I am not saying sin. They will say, oh, you said it's okay to sin. I never said that. I've seen deliverance even uh, our senior prophet that is with Jesus, Prophet T.B. Joshua, delivering somebody because they got a certain tattoo and a spirit entered them. But tattoos don't have demons. So what made the spirit enter them is not the tattoo. There are people who will say, oh, I, uh, you ate food given to witches and now you are possessed. Right? I've seen it. I've delivered countless people with these things where they were fed witchcraft. Then Paul comes and says, I can eat all their food and nothing will happen to me. He said, I can eat foods dedicated to their gods. It will not defile me. It will not affect me. Because it is not what goes into man that defiles man, but what comes out of them. So if you have no energy coming out of you. Yes. You're teaching. You didn't get what I just told you. Teaching. What destroys you is not what is coming in. It's what is coming out. That's so good. Because every time you speak, every time you do something, you are exposing your potential. Because the enemy always goes after your ability to produce energy. Because the only way he kills you is by being the barrier to energy accumulating in you. Because anything that has energy is alive. And anything that has no energy is dead. It becomes inanimate. When you go to the morgue, people are frozen still. Becomes, the longer you leave them, the harder they become. When they embalm them, their bodies become even more solid. You touch their body, it's cold. Extremely cold. There is no more energy. So Satan comes to make you what? Cold. Because if he can put a barrier between you interacting with God, wow. you are dry. Let me finish. Because I'm over five minutes and Esther's giving me potential wicked eyes. <laughs> she calls this weekend. What did you call this weekend? Churchella. Ch Instead of Coachella, it's what? Chachella. <laughs> and we need that for sure. So, so are, are, are you hearing this? 
That is why I am always on the move. I am full of energy. Not just physical energy, spiritual energy. Ah, I, Amen. <laughs> It is manifested in the physical. Amen. I could keep going and going and going and going and going and going. Why? Full of energy. Yes. Not just spiritual, but also physical. Because the spirit of man keeps man from all what is infirmities. So if your spirit is weak, your physical body will also be weak. That is why you can go to all the gym you want, do all the cardio you want. When trouble comes, you feel like you have no energy. Because your spirit is weak. Preserve. Hear me. Preserve. I'm going to say it one more time. Preserve. Don't only preserve, but increase. And then protect. When I'm about to go and preach, I don't like giving people hugs. <laughs> yeah. You may take the ability I need to deliver somebody. I'm not going to hug you. Yeah. My spiritual mother, Mary, used to be like that. Oh, mama, oh, bless you. She was country. She didn't play that game. <laughs> because she understood this. After, we can hug and all that. But in the beginning, mm, there are specific people that you can. And there are people who you cannot. This is why when I'm preaching, I always say, guys, put your signs down. Let me minister to you. Why? I'm trying to increase your potential energy. Yeah. Yeah. That is why somebody can be in Uganda, have more energy than you who is close to the prophet. Come on. Come on. Because many Christians have become vortexes of taking. That is why there is no loyalty in the church. They will go to this one to anoint them. They will go to another one to anoint them. They will go to another one to anoint them. They will go to another. It's like, guys, they are just looking for greater, more powerful anointing. No. It's last. You can't be satisfied. It is no longer your problem that wants the energy. Something else is taking that energy. You say, Father, I come, for you, come to you to pray for me. The moment prayer begins... I remember also this one. Remember also, God knows. Does he not know? He sent his word. How did he send the word and it went specifically to the sickness? How? Energy will always be attracted to where there is motion or potential motion. But there are people who have potential motion, but they will never uh, do nothing with it and they have no actions to follow anything. That's why the Bible says faith without works is what? Dead. 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 You're wasting time. A, a few years ago... Um, my wife bought me for one of my birthdays, I can't remember, a Tesla. Because I just wanted, she, I just wanted a, a, a fast car. Let's, let's see how fast this is. I have many other incredible ones, but this one was one of them. And I remember when I wanted to charge the car, at the charge at home, the first days I got this, I would pull that battery all the way up. Because I just wanted it to be completely full. Why wouldn't you want it to be full? Then he brought up a notification. He says that if you accumulate it too much, you are killing the battery life. So also receiving energy that you don't use kills you. Yes, amen. I just use this as an analogy to help you. Why do you think Elisha died? His bones still carried energy to raise the dead, but he, he died. Because he carried too much, but never gave out. He was a lone ranger. He will solve your problem and he will pray for you, will do this, but he stuck to himself. He never had an apprentice. 
Do you know why I want to teach every moment? I want to do this every moment because I know if I keep the the energy of God within me, it is supposed to go out. If I keep it and keep it and keep it and keep it and don't use it, it will start to destroy me because energy begins to pile up like nuclear. It wants to break out. So the more you keep it, it starts to break your body. That's so good. Uh, I'm telling you secrets of power. Your word is like fire shut up in my bones. I can't help but let it out. Most Christians are actually sick, not because the devil attacked you. You don't use what you are given. That is why when you go to prayer, there is no demon to cast. You start blaming, oh, there was an auntie that visited my house. There was an uncle that came, "Mm, it has to be that one. You will notice those who are actively serving God live long. Those who say, I'm waiting on God, waiting on God, they just die mysteriously. You're like, hey. Because energy must be spent. It can't just be stored the whole time. There will be a surge. If you look at our walls, we have power plugs, right? And we have a great we have we have transformers outside on the power lines and each community has like a power center where the power grids are that is where all the energy is being brought from somewhere else comes there and then it is distributed that power plant or whatever you call it is continuously putting out energy Is continually putting out energy. Continually putting out energy. That's how you're supposed to be. But if you just pile it up and it's not going anywhere, the transformer will overheat and something negative will happen. Jesus would spend all night praying and spend all day helping. He didn't just stay in the mountain. This is why I, you know, some of you love monks and sadhus and all these wise men that go and sit in the mountain by themselves. Mm. To me, that is a form of powerlessness. It is easier to be isolated without people and think you have power. Let's put you among people. Let's see how you do. Let's put a bunch of people around you. Let's see if you actually carry the power to help them. You realize that it is not there. They're not healing people. They're not delivering people. It's not like that. Energy must be spent. That is why Jesus said, who touched me? Because she pulled a lot. Then the woman came and says, it. his disciples were like, Lord, everybody is touching you. He said, nah. Somebody took power from me. What? So problems will always draw power. Some of you need to start singing. When they call you, say, call on Jesus. What I have is for my assignment. Don't try to be everyone's savior. You are not Jesus. That's good. There are times I say, if the house is burning, call Jesus. Don't call me. Call 911. Don't call me. I'm not saving anyone. I'm not anyone's savior. Jesus the Lord is. And you have to remember this. I'll finish with this. The Bible says Jesus had the spirit without what? Measure. You see the difference between spirit and power. Spirit without measure, but power is declining. Let me show you one place that Jesus could do no power, uh, could do no miracles. Find it for me, Musa. Jesus goes to his hometown. Jesus who can do all things. <laughs> ah, spiritual things. Uh, thank you, they are spiritual. 
They are just spirituality is just spirituality. Can you find it for me, please? Benny, you have it? Okay, he found it. Let's start from um, three verses before. So in Jesus, let's actually start from verse 53. And it came to pass that when Jesus had finished these parables, he departed thence. And when he was come into his own country, the biggest energy takers are your own people. You feel the obligation to be there for them. The truth is you leave them to God. They are God's people, not your people. And when he came, when he, when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they was they were what astonished they were shocked and said whence had this man this wisdom and this mighty works they were shocked where did this ninja come from and where did all this mighty works come from how is he doing it then in order to justify their unbelief, uh, is this not the guy from Kenya? We know him. <laughs> is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? <laughs> and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. And not this. We know Jesus' as brothers. You know some people don't know Jesus as brothers and sisters. After he was birthed, hey, Uncle Joseph had to get his. <laughs> Jesus was not his. <laughs> Gotta get my own. <laughs> Gotta do my thing. <laughs> God, you took nine months from me and a few years. Now it's my turn. <laughs> and his sisters... Are they not all with us? Whence then had this man all these things? We know this guy. We have seen him preach. We know he was a musician. Where did he get this witchcraft warlock? Same story. And they were offended in him. I just came to pray for you. I just came to help you. Now all of a sudden you are offended. By my ability to be used by God. Listen. Same script, different actors. I'm still going. Let me keep reading. Let me keep reading. And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them. A prophet is not with honor. Say save in his own country and his own house. I understand why God made me so great. It's because I'm not among my people. That is for sure. Because a prophet is always sent away from his people. No, this is true. Jesus had the most difficult calling because he went to his own people. Yesterday when we were baptizing all this people of God. People travel from Canada, people traveled from Asia, people travel from Europe, people travel from, from, from Australia, people travel from everywhere to be but I was, you know, I looked at uh, uh, my righteous apostle and I said, you know, people say they have a global church. Now, this is actually like indeed, like Amen. <laughs> a church to nations for sure. It's like, where did all these people come from? God just brought them from everywhere in the world. Everywhere. Yes. Just to be baptized. Yes. Followed classes online and came to be. I was actually blown away. Yesterday, you know, I see it and then I forget about it. Yesterday, I was reminded. 
Papa, we came from Canada. Papa, we came from Armenia. Papa, we came from this country. Papa, we came from this country. Prophet, we came from here. Brother, we came from here. We just came to see you. It's so nice to see you. He's like, what? Were there no pools in your, in your country? Were there no pastors in your country? It shows the grace. Amen, amen. It shows the grace that is in this place. It's different. It's not like I'm on TV in their nations or anything. It just shows the grace. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Let's keep pushing. Next verse, look at this. Jesus is saying he has no honor here. Actually, the fun, the thing that I care, I was told by um, I was told by one of my spiritual brothers. Actually, the people who are my major critics actually come from my country. I am not full blood. My mother is mixed, but my father, same country. Your own house. Your own people. Let's keep going. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The Bible says Jesus could do no miracles. This one says he did not do many mighty works. He did very little. You think Jesus has no power. And he goes on to in other passages, in other gospels, he says, and he could do no miracles. He could do no. Meaning he tried miracles, he could not. He had to do something else. They bound Jesus because energy couldn't go anywhere. Wow. Let me tell you why the gift of prophecy is dangerous. Is extremely powerful. Because the gift of prophecy or the prophetic ability doesn't need you to receive it for it to manifest. Look at this. Listen, listen uh, play, uh, look at this. He could, he could there do no mighty works, save he laid his hands upon a few sick folks and healed them. <laughs> he could do anything. Jesus was just like a, some pastor somewhere and just anointing them and some people got healed and he moved on. Could do no might. The things he wanted to do, he couldn't do. Yeah. I'm going to give you something profound in a second. Thank you. He could do no mighty works. Zero. This is why as a pastor you need to know who are your people. Who are serving with you. Because others may be the reason why you can't do mighty works. As a woman of God, as a man of God, you need to ask yourself, who am I with? Because some people you may be in relationship with. They are your limitation, not a demon. God told Abraham, leave your father and mother's house, leave them. He took Lot. Lot kept him for years from realizing he was in the promised land. People who are not called with you, carrying them, will only create problems for you. And when you release them, they will always go to Sodom and Gomorrah. They will never choose the place of God because it was never for them. The reason why they are fighting you is because they are taking from you, but another energy is also pushing them to remain with you. It's teaching good. As we finish today, Choose your people. Understand who is there for you. And understand who is not. Understand who is an acquaintance, who is family, who is blood, who is a, 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 who, who, who it is a, a relationship by bond of the spirit. Who are you with? You need to know that because if you don't, if you don't, you will shipwreck. Yeah,